Thor kvað. Illum huga launaðir þú, þó góðar gjafar. Horbarðr kvað. Þatt hefir eik er af annarri skefr. Um sig er hver í slíku. Hvað vandu með hann Thor? Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford. I have continued to present videos about what Old Norse probably sounded like over the past six years or so of making hundreds of videos on this channel. Uh, but many of my ideas about that are based on the language as preserved on paper and as compared to the modern Scandinavian languages on paper. And the modern Scandinavian languages that I've been most familiar with have uh, historically been Icelandic and Norwegian. But I had a chance to visit Sweden and Finland this summer, and while Finnish is not even a descendant of Old Norse in the way that Icelandic, Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish and Faroese are, it has been in contact with Old Norse for a long time, and furthermore, in learning conversational Finnish, I had to go beyond my comfort zone a little bit with um, the, the phonology of a language. Finnish has some features that uh, have to be reckoned with uh, that are a little bit different from anything you have to deal with in Norwegian or Swedish or Icelandic, the other languages that I, that I try to speak. In having that reckoning with an unfamiliar modern spoken language, I had some thoughts about ways that I could probably reconstruct the pronunciation of Old Norse more realistically. So this video is about uh, some of those ideas, although it's mostly a demonstration of what Old Norse might sound like with a couple of uh, new ideas I got from hearing more Swedish and Finnish. <laughs> Now this is kind of a hopeless uh, task because, um, you know, all of the influential people on the internet and apparently to be an influential person on the internet about the subject, you need to have, I don't know, a skin and even last name, a really long beard, some rune tattoos, and to shout at people about what Odin wants them to do or something, um, you know, and then in academia, uh, surprisingly, people who are interested in Norse language often just let it go at modern Icelandic pronunciation, and that's the same thing the online influencers do. So uh, I'm probably just deepening the futility of my project to you know, convince people that Old Norse sounded different now that I'm actually making this more complicated. But if you watch uh, one of my old videos about Old Norse pronunciation, you'll see me reading all of them all stanza 77, the uh, most famous quotation from Hovmal, one of the most famous quotations in Old Norse. And I want to read it to you with some of my new ideas from hearing more Swedish and Finnish, and uh, then I'll explain a few of the things that I've changed. <laughs> Deur fe, deia friend, deur sjálfrit sama, ek eit ein at aldri deur, domr um deudan huer. What have I changed relative to old attempts to pronounce the stanza as it might have sounded in Old Norse? Well, for one thing, that E-Y diphthong, I've often pronounced Ø in imitation of the Norwegian diphthong uh, written that way, which is descended from um, the diphthong in this place in Old Norse. Now, in Old Norwegian, though, it's often actually spelled that way, 
but this spelling in Old Icelandic actually matches the spelling of a Finnish diphthong pronounced A. It's actually, it actually is E plus the rounded front vowel Y. Uh, it is quite possible that instead of just being a variant way of spelling the same sound as I've often taken the Icelandic and Norwegian spellings in the past, what you have there is that the Icelandic and the Norwegian diphthongs, which are both resulting from I mutation here, are different from one another. Uh, so I'm taking that uh, possibility here. Another thing inspired by Finnish is um, we know that certain vowels were longer than other vowels in Old Norse, meaning they actually were pronounced longer. E eh versus e, eh, u versus u. Those are marked with long vowels by conventional classical Old Norse spelling. So I'm actually making more of an effort now, uh, having heard this difference so palpably and had, having to need to make these different short versus long vowels in Finnish. Um, I'm more conscious of it now, so fe rather than just fe, a longer vowel. Inspired by Swedish, I've been considering whether Old Norse might have had a more, what would have sounded to a modern English speaker more like a sing-song pronunciation. In modern Swedish, standard Swedish, different dialects have different features, different Norwegian dialects have different features, but I'll talk about just standard Swedish here because it's, it's fairly easy to get a grasp on. Words that were two syllables in Old Norse and are still two syllables in modern Swedish, are accented on the first syllable, but they have an uptone on the second syllable. This is part of what gives Swedish its characteristic sing-song sound to uh, foreign speakers, right? We see this very often in infinitive verbs in Swedish. Veta, fulja, leva. I don't do it perfectly, I'm not a native speaker, but you, you kind of get the, the idea if you listen to some Swedish. So I'm wondering if you know, this had to have developed somewhere in the Old Norse period, uh, whether it was early in the Old Norse period or late in it. I tend to think early because Norwegian and Swedish share the, the, the sing-song tones, and then Danish has the stud feature corresponding to where uh, Norwegian and Swedish have certain tone placements. It, this gets a little bit complicated, but it shows that there's some feature in Old Norse that is still reflected in tonality in Norwegian and Swedish and instead in Danish. So here I am attempting to reproduce the standard Swedish uh, emphasis on first syllable, uptone on second, in words like deya, sama. I'm probably not doing it perfectly well, but uh, it's worth thinking about whether a feature like that was present in Old Norse. Very likely was. Another thing, uh, the V sound, I now, I've, I've long thought that there was a distribution in Old Norse, something like in some varieties of Afrikaans, where a V at the beginning of a word is a V sound, but after a consonant, it's a W. So that you would have vate, I know, but then um, something like twer, two. Now, having been in Iceland also this summer, I realized that actually the V in Icelandic is an approximate anyway. It's sort of between what English speakers think of as a V and what English speakers think of as a W. And that's part of why speakers of European languages with approximants, Icelandic is one, Russian is another, Finnish is another, are often perceived by English speakers as making W's where there's an English word of the V, right? Very good. I think that perhaps it's just an approximate already in Old Norse, and this, is, this accounts for some of the ways that it patterns like a V in some respects and like a W in others. So, Vate, not vate, right? But both lips and not as occluded lips. Vate. And then, as a final note on this, uh, as far as what's in this stanza, dauthon, uh, having a backer diphthong, au, as opposed to my American English, especially Western American English diphthong that starts with a, a front vowel and ash there, right? I say house, right? Not haus, which is a little bit more German. Uh, or probably a little bit more Old Norse too, something like Daudan. So to read that one again, Deir fe, Deia rendr, Deir sjolr it sama, Ek veit ein at aldri Deir domr um Daudan hver. I think that's probably a little bit closer to what the Scandinavian languages sounded like when the poems of the Poetic Edda were composed 
and written down. Of course, it's impossible to know exactly what a given extinct language sounded like at a particular time, at a particular place. We can only do approximations, but I guarantee you it was something more like that than like any specific spoken language today. Now, it's absolutely futile for me to talk about this again. People are going to go on pronouncing Old Norse as modern Icelandic, but I promise you there are interesting questions remaining to be solved about Old Norse pronunciation, and I haven't begun to solve them, and no one will care if I do. <laughs> I'm going to read a few more of these quotes uh, as I travel around the San Juans this weekend. Hovamol stands at 22. Vesalmar och illaskape hlar at huivetna. Hitki han vet er han veta fyrti at han er at vamma vanr. Hovamo stanza 133. Oft vitu o gorla ther er sitja inni fyrir hvers ther ru kins er koma er at madr svo góður at galli ne fylgi Ne svo illur at enu ge dyrge. The grimni small stands at twenty. Hugin ok munin flyuha querian dag jormun grund uvir. Ohum ek of hugin at han after ne komit. Tho Sjomsk mer um munin. From the falls of Colorado's beautiful Rio Grande River, I'm wishing you all the best.